Hey, this is YBR with Cartoon Project. So I made a video for this game a long time ago, but there's been a bunch of updates since then. There's some new fun things we can do. So the first thing I want to do, and what's going to be the focus of this video, is we're going to get a car, and we're going to V6 swap it to have hopefully around a thousand horsepower. The first thing we need to do is go to the used car dealership and find the right car. And sometimes the car you want isn't available. Thankfully, the car I want is right here. In fact, we have two options for basically the exact same car. The only difference is the mileage. And for some reason, the one with more mileage is more expensive. So do I want less mileage or more expensive? Well, I want the less mileage and cheaper, thank you very much. So we're going to buy that car. And now what I need to do is fix up the paint job. I know I said I was going to V6 swap it, but this paint job is gross. That is not the kind of color I want for my car. So let's go ahead and buy all the things required to give it a new paint job. So we go to the workshop tools and then we need to buy all the painting things. Well, actually all we really need is the paint gun and that is it. What color do I want my paint gun to be? Ah, uh, yes, a nice bright yellow. Everything is going to be yellow. Even the car is going to be yellow. We'll also get the polisher in, of course, yellow so we can polish the car. The other stuff we don't technically need, but hey, if we want to throw on stickers, we better have it available. And it had color options, but they don't actually do anything, so just give me one of those. Now we need to go and buy a paint can of the correct color. And that yellow, that looks perfect. Nothing else required. That is excellent. Order all that stuff for $3,000. Well, actually, I should say credits because I spent $160,000 on this car if those are dollars. Anyways, let's go ahead and go to the paint booth and we're going to paint this guy up. Now, there are two ways we can do this. And I want to paint this the realistic way. I could just click once and it paints the whole body part perfectly. But I like doing it the realistic way where you say, all right, we're going to put a big fat spray on this thing. But it's going to be like really low intensity. So it's going to look terrible. So it won't look like I was actually using a spray paint gun like I'm really using. It'll look like I had just a couple of cans of spray paint and I used those things on the car. And I'm just going to be doing this over the entire car. So I'll be back once it's acceptable. And I am done. And you can tell this looks bad this looks terrible even but i love it because it gives it character it looks like a hand painted car because that's exactly what i did i just hand went everywhere and anywhere it looked a little too dark i just kind of went over a little bit more i was like yeah that's good enough okay on to the next section and it's exactly the look i was going for so now we can go ahead and actually v6 swap it the first step in the engine swap is to completely remove the old engine. And we're doing serious work here. So we removed the whole hood. We ain't just lifting it up. We're taking this whole engine out of here. So the engine that's in it right now is perfectly reasonable. It's a nice little inline six. The problem is it's not a V6. And also the overall size is quite a bit smaller than the V6. So it can't make as much power. So that's why we're going to go ahead and remove it. We're starting with everything in the front. So these are all like the auxiliary bits, like the cooling fan, the water pump, the starter, belts, all that kind of stuff. And apparently the camshaft falls into that category as well. I was just clicking everything down here without really paying attention to what it was. And yet I pulled off the whole camshaft. See, alternator, that's more of what I was thinking. And that's everything on the outside of the engine. So now we're inside the timing cover and we're pulling off everything in here. And we're pulling things off really fast. I like a game where you can disassemble an engine in just a few minutes. All right, all the stuff on the front has been removed. Now let's go over to the top and we'll start removing the intake. Starting with the air filter. And that is something we can change the color of, actually. Some of these parts, you can choose a specific color when you buy it. And this car is yellow themed. So I want to make sure when I buy the parts for the car, they're going to also be yellow. So everything about the car is perfectly themed up. And this is the one part I always forget about, the exhaust header. It just kind of sneaks in there and you don't see it and you just forget about it for some reason. At least... I do, but I remembered it this time so we can keep disassembling everything from the top of the engine bay, although we are almost done here. We can still get the connecting rod set, but I think that's everything we can do from above, and now to get the final pieces, we need to go ahead and put the car on the lift. So my head is down here and ready to go, and the car lifts up more than I expected. Whoops. Yeah. Okay, I didn't plan this through exactly. My camera angle is terrible. There we are. So now to finish things up, we need to get the oil pan, and then we need to get the crankshaft out of here. Well, actually, before we can do the crankshaft, we do need to remove all of the transmission behind the engine. So let's go ahead and spin around here. So we'll start with the gearbox, and then we go to the clutch, which is kind of hard to see because I'm not zoomed in. So let's zoom in, and now you can see me remove the flywheel. And after the flywheel, we finally get to the crankshaft. And you know what's after the crankshaft? The rest of the engine block. And there we go. We now have an empty engine bay ready to install into. So now 
we need to buy all the parts required to build an entire V6 engine. And thankfully, the parts catalog has everything you could possibly want. Under engine components, we need the block. This is the heart and soul of the engine. What a beautiful V6 engine we have. And while we're here, we can also go ahead and grab the oil pan. And neither of these have colors. You'll notice only some parts have the option for color, so we gotta pay attention. When we pick the part, do we have the option? A lot of internal parts like piston sets and crankshafts, obviously those ones wouldn't have colors because it'd be so dumb. You don't even get to see the parts after they're installed into the vehicle. So those are the parts just for the V6. And it's actually pretty easy to find the parts for the V6. Because what you do is you look at the bottom parts. Because the parts are organized by engine type. So usually the ones we want are at the bottom of the choices. Here's a part that has colors. And as I said, the color scheme is yellow. So we're going to get yellow on the cylinder heads. And I know we only grabbed one cylinder head. That's because it has separate parts for the left and right one. See, there is the other side. So make sure it's also in yellow. Perfect. And then we got a few more parts through here we're gonna buy and I'm not really paying attention to what I'm buying I'm just making sure is it for the right vehicle yes oh, except here on the intake and exhaust camshafts we do need two of these for each of them I'm pretty sure every other part we're gonna buy is only just one of each though that's the only one you got to watch out for and those are all of the parts we need for the v6 now we go to electronical components and we have some ignition coils and that's all for that next we have cooling so we have the water pump and then the radiator tubes. Over to fuel systems, we have just the fuel rails here, nothing else there. And then air inlet, this is a little bit interesting. So we can get a couple of air filters and we can match them to the car. Why did I get three? Because we're going to turbocharge this thing and each turbo gets an air filter. We also got a few more parts down here that we got to get that are V6 specific and then we are done. So now we'll go ahead and go to the boost chargers option and this is where the turbochargers are at. And we need two different turbochargers, one for the left side of the engine and one for the right side of the engine. And thankfully, we can get them in yellow. Gotta have that beautiful yellow color. And then we're all done here. So we can go ahead and go to the next option, which is going to be braking system. For the braking system, we don't need anything because we can reuse the old parts. For the drive line, we can actually reuse the whole old transmission. So again, we don't need anything from here. And for the exhaust system, we could go and grab a different exhaust tip if I wanted to. But more importantly, we need to get some exhaust headers. Now we have two options here. One of them is the one used to the turbocharger and the other ones you use if you don't have a turbo. And I don't remember which is which. So we're going to grab a couple of each and we'll figure it out when we install them. And then we need to go to the final category, which is miscellaneous. And on miscellaneous, we can get the engine cover and make it yellow. And then the electrical wiring as well. And that should be everything we need to build the V6 engine. It only cost 113,000 credits, which is almost how much I paid for the car itself with a working engine already installed. Yeah, I'm not good with money, but I hopefully am good at building an engine. Thankfully, the game naturally guides you. It doesn't tell you exactly what parts you need to install when, but it won't let you install things incorrectly. So let's go ahead and get started. And the very first thing we need to install is the block. So this is going to be a little bit hard because we got to like scroll around to find the right parts. Now, all the parts I bought are listed after the parts I removed from the vehicle, but we are going to reuse some of them. So we're going to have to scroll back and forth to make sure we get all the parts we need. So we'll just do the bare minimum to the underside of the vehicle so we can go and attach the transmission. So for the transmission, we scroll back up and we're going to reuse the flywheel. We're going to reuse the clutch and we're going to reuse the gearbox. And that's everything we should need to do with the car up on the lift. Everything else we do from below the car so we can go ahead and lower the car from the lift. And one thing that's funny is when you're lowering the car, you can't move the camera at all. You just watch. Look how far the car is. I can't even see the engine. Whoop. There we go. Oh, that's a little too close. Don't want to be that close. So back to building. These are all the old parts starting here. So these are the new parts. So let's focus on literally the things that go on the top half of the engine. So first off, we got to get those cylinders in there before we start stacking other things on top of it. Cylinders are in. So now we need to do the cylinder heads. And this is another part where we have a left side and a right side. Which is left and which is right? Is it from the angle I'm looking at or is it from the driver's perspective? I don't know. But either way, after that, we need to put both the intake and exhaust camshafts into both sides. Again, which is left, which is right. It truly is a mystery. 
And also, we can tune the intake and exhaust camshafts, but I always forget which way you're supposed to do it. Basically, you max out one of the angles and you minimize the other angle for max performance, but I don't remember if you max the intake and minimize the exhaust or max the exhaust and minimize the intake. So we'll try it both ways and whichever gives us better performance, that's the way we'll use. I know on the script I should have wrote which you minimize and which you maximize, but I didn't. I just put maximize one, minimize the other like a dummy. So I'll figure it out later on. This is why we use flexible scripts. And then we're going to go ahead and just finish up the cylinder heads. So they're done. We put the covers on and they are beautiful and yellow. That is the most important part about this engine. It's yellow. Doesn't matter if it's a V6 or that it makes hopefully a thousand horsepower. It's got to be yellow. So now we need to find the next part we're going to install, which is going to be the exhaust header. And we have two options, and I'm thinking this is the one you use for the turbocharger. To confirm this, let's go ahead and try to install a turbo. See, one only fits on the left side, one fits on the right side, and that's the correct one. The one that's all kind of bunched together like that. So then get the other turbo installed, and now we're cooking. Twin turbo. We'll get the intake manifold installed. Whoops. This is the intake manifold you install first. It's a two-part manifold. So then we could actually install the fuel rails between them because it makes the most sense because it's easiest to access like this. And then we install the other half of the intake manifold like so. Beautiful. Then we go ahead and put a throttle on it so we can control how much power we make. And then we're just going to put a bunch of air filters on. So we'll put one down there. We'll put one over on the other turbo. And I thought I could put one on the throttle as well, but it didn't seem like it wanted me to. So we'll just ignore that for now and install all the junk onto the front of the engine. We just have all kinds of parts with the belt and the chains and the timing pieces. So I'm just clicking these pretty much at random. And if they say it can be installed, I'm going to install it until I finally run out of pieces to install. And I'm running out of pieces because we need to put the front on. So I think we got everything that goes on the inside. So now we can put all the things on the outside. I thought those drive belts were for this one, but maybe it's actually requiring me to put the tensioners on before the belts. That would makes sense but i know i can install the radiator tubes right yep probably could install that earlier but i accidentally skipped over it so now can i put the drive belts on okay good that was making me a little bit worried okay drive belt tensioner then drive belt make sure you do it right ybr we didn't put the camshaft bearings on Ooh, that's bad that's really bad because i don't know if i'm actually going to be able to install it because it's completely covered on the top of the engine by everything and then on the bottom of the engine is covered by the oil pan, which I guess just removing the oil pan isn't that difficult, but we're going to see what happens. Either way, to install this, the car needs to be up on the lift. And then let's try to get a good camera angle on that engine and try to install the crankshaft bearings. It'll just let me install it. That's great. That is actually really, really good and surprising. So I think we have everything that is V6 engine specific that is required for the vehicle to run. So now... We can get all the other generic parts installed as well. So there are things like the alternator and the cooling fan. And I think that's about it. So where is the alternator go? I can't see. Oh, that's the wrong way. The camera's inverted from what I expected. There we go. And I am at a terrible angle, but at least I could fit everything I need to. And actually, that looks like that's going to be it. Just those two pieces. Oh, apparently the cooling fan doesn't work. Do I need like some extra piece to attach the cooling fan that I forgot about? I don't see anything that's like a specific piece to attach it well hopefully we don't have to worry about the engine overheating let's go ahead and try this thing out at the dyno room and see what happens it runs and it makes 481 horsepower but i'm going for a thousand horsepower so it's time to really tune this thing up and there's actually one part that i forgot to buy and that's because i don't remember where exactly it is it might be under miscellaneous or it might be under something else. So I don't see it under miscellaneous. So let's go ahead and check under electronic components. And there it is, the electronic control unit, AKA the ECU. This is very important because this allows me to make the engine rev up to like infinity. Okay, not that high, but it does help quite a bit to get this engine revving. So we'll go ahead and mount it right here. And then if we go to the tuning mode, we can go ahead and say, what's the max RPM? 10,000, what's the minimum? 2,500, I don't care about fuel economy, make this thing rev like crazy. Well, actually, I wonder if a lower or higher minimum RPM is better for spooling up the turbos. I don't know. Speaking of spooling up the turbos, hey, look, they're only doing 0 0.6 bars. Give me that 2.2 bars. And wait a minute. Why are they that color? I thought I picked yellow. They don't look yellow, do they? It's hard to get the right angle on them because they're like so hidden in the engine bay, but they don't look yellow. Oh, I guess it is yellow. Sort of. Yellowish. That's blue! That's blue! What happened? Did I buy blue and I just wasn't paying attention? That is a good possibility. 
If that is the case, whoops. The yellow I'm seeing is the uh, air filters, right? Yeah. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and test this thing out and see how much power it can make now. Oh, look at how bumpy it is. That's great. The good news is, though, hey, look at the power. 731. You know that bumpiness? It shouldn't even be able to rev there because the minimum RPM is 2,500. So that's just the engine choking and dying, basically. But there are a handful of other things we can tweak to make more power. The air consumption, just stuff as much air into the engine as we possibly can, basically. And we can actually do that twice because we have two intake manifold pieces. So make sure they're in sync. And if the fuel mixture, make it rich and make it have tons of fuel. So let's see what that does to the dynographs. Oh, it's backfiring now, and it's not even doing nothing. Although overall power is roughly the same. Interesting though, the spikiness at low RPM is gone. So now back into the engine, and we're going to start tearing it up just a little bit so we can get access to the exhaust and intake camshafts. Because I want to switch it up where the minimum is now the maximum, and the maximum is now the minimum, and we're going to see if that makes more or less horsepower. We might be able to get more horsepower with a certain combination of mostly maxed out, mostly minimized or something like that. But I'm not going to go that deep into the tuning unless I absolutely have to. Right now, we're just going the maximums and the minimums. And now that we're done with that, we could go ahead and put the parts back on. I just got to remember what order they go in. So it's cylinder head cover and then the ignition coils. That's all I had to remove. Well, also, there is the electrical wiring, but that comes on whenever I want. I don't think it matters if it goes on before or after the pieces I just installed. And now the engine should work. So everybody cross your fingers for big horsepower. Oh, look at that. Look how much more power it looks like it's going to make. And it does. 898 horsepower. That's a heck of a lot of power. I like that. Oh, we got to try this thing out see what it drives like. And since the dyno is at the wheels, you got to account for drivetrain loss. And you see a lot of numbers thrown around there, but one of the ones I see most often is 15%, which means this engine is definitely making over a thousand horsepower. So we're going to try it out at the best place there is for that, which is the abandoned airport. And we're going to start off just by seeing how fast can we go when we just floor it down this thing. I don't know how long this airport actually is. If I had to guess, I would think it's probably like a mile long. So we're going to see how fast can we go in about a mile of road minus the distance it takes to slow down. And we are up to 160 miles per hour and we are still pulling at 170 miles per hour. There's like 175, but I got some on my brakes because I do not want to wreck my brand new car into that wall. I might have been able to pull 175 even, but I just didn't want to take the risk. So we're going to go back here and we're going to do a drag race between me and the AI car that you can drag race. And I know their car is not fast. Their car is basically a stock vehicle or very close to it so it probably has like 200 300 horsepower and i'm rolling up with an engine that makes over 1000 horsepower this is not going to be a fair race at all and i can't remember if you actually can just enter the race and it teleports you in the correct position or if you have to line up ourselves so just in case i want to make sure i line up in the right orientation although i bet i could still beat them even if i started in the wrong direction Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them a five second head start. That to me sounds like a very fair thing to do considering how much faster my vehicle should be. So here we go. They're going. What are they driving? Oh, they got the same car as me. All right. So four, five seconds and we are off. And let's see. Are we able to beat them? Oh, we are gaining on them already. You can tell my car is so much faster. And that is an easy victory for my vehicle. And the time it would take here would actually be about so that's 17 seconds very very good time so that's going to do it for this video if there is enough interest there will be another video for cartoon project with this car where we upgrade other parts of it so we upgrade the body maybe the suspension and the wheels and make it the best car it could possibly be so if you're interested in seeing that do leave a comment so i know and until next time this has been ybr and remember if you like or dislike this video i will know I can tell by how much power the engine makes. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. And no, we're not actually going to ruin my car. I just hand-built. That'd be absurd. Ooh, but do you see that? After I hit return to garage, it crashed into the ground, so I got to make sure. It looks like everything's okay. So it looks like once you hit the button, it doesn't matter after you crash. That would definitely be something worth testing with a head-on collision. But this video is already over.